Have you ever heard of the packing party method? It's a method coined by Joshua Fields Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus, and it's sometimes referred to as one of the most extreme ways to get rid of all the clutter you own. Here's how it works. You pack up all of your possessions as if you're moving out. Then, as you go about your routine, you gradually unpack items as you use them. By the end of a set period, for instance a month, you donate, sell or throw away what's left in the boxes. Well, I decided to give it a try. However, what was supposed to be a one month long fun experiment extended to six months of frustration and agony. In the end, I threw away over 800 items. But I would say it was all worth it. To organize my stuff into the boxes, I had one box for items to throw away, one box for stuff to be sold, and one box for sentimental stuff. For the remaining boxes, I organized stuff so I could easily find them if need be. Electronics. I then used an app to calculate the number of items I had. Every time I packed an item, I tapped my phone and the number increased by one. 248 pieces of clothing. Oh, I have so many papers and documents. In the end, it took me three full days to pack everything and I filled 10 big boxes with 954 items. So I've uh, now packed everything I own into these boxes. On the first three days, I took out around 50 items from the boxes. This included basic clothes like t-shirts, socks, underwear and shorts. Some electronics like laptop, mouse, headphones and hard drives and camera equipment like cameras, lights and mics. Now, the interesting thing was that after the first few days, I rarely took anything out of the boxes. And even when I did take an item out of the box, I made sure that the item would provide real value by asking questions like Does it provide long-term value? Do I use it regularly? Is it of high quality? And do I have other items that would do the same thing? And in the end, I hope that this creates a more minimalistic mindset and an appreciation for the items that I already have. So this is uh, my room's new fresh decorative design. And as you might notice, the primary decorative element are uh, cardboard boxes. And whereas normal people might have uh, clothes in their closets, I have more cardboard boxes. It's simple, it's elegant, it's space saving. What else could you ask for? But to be honest, I hated those damn boxes. It was so frustrating to find anything. Where are my juggling balls? I tried to find a book that I have. Where are my juggling balls? I didn't even know I had a safe. Uh, no, they're not here either. Why is there a fork? It has to be here. I checked every box. I didn't find them, so I need to go through each box again. <laughs> and then there were some other weird occasions, like the time when an alarm clock started randomly ringing in one of the boxes, and I had to go through a dozen boxes to find it. And the fact that it was so hard to find anything from the boxes made me reluctant to even change my clothes. At one point I realized that I had been using the same clothes for six days now. And even though I think it's admirable that I'm still trying to use the same clothes, oh, oh I probably should get another t-shirt and uh, maybe change my boxers and maybe even my socks. But even in the midst of my despair, I did notice a few benefits. Having less stuff laying around seemed to clear my head a bit. It made it easier to focus and maybe even reduced my stress levels, but I had no idea why. So I wondered, what was it about a decluttered environment that made me more focused and less stressed? Well, I did some research. Well, okay, I, I didn't read that book. 
but I did read quite a few academic papers about decluttering and its health benefits. For instance, a 2010 study found that a cluttered home can disturb cortisol levels, which can then lead to more stress. And then another study found that the amount of attentional modulation varied linearly with the degree of competition left unresolved by bottom-up processes such as the attentional modulation was greater when the neural competition was influenced by bottom-up and most competition was um, yeah. Simply put, they found that being surrounded by physical clutter competes for your attention, which can uh, result in poor focus. Also, I found an interesting connection between decluttering and willpower. Have you ever wondered why some of the most successful people on this planet, like uh, Barack Obama, Mark Zuckerberg and Steve Jobs, always seem to use the same clothes? I mean, wh why is that? Apparently, willpower is a limited resource. And one thing that depletes your willpower is making decisions. So by using the same clothes every day, you remove a decision. And now if we expand this idea, by removing all the excess stuff you have, you are dramatically reducing the decisions you need to make, and hence saving your willpower. A month passed and this challenge should have been over. However, on the 3rd of May, I wrote in my journal that I might need to extend this decluttering challenge. Month just isn't enough to know what stuff I actually need, so perhaps I'll start by extending this challenge by a month. But well, in the end, I extended this challenge by quite a lot more. So I've now kept my stuff in boxes for five months. Let's see how much stuff I actually used. Right, so this is all the stuff I've taken out of the boxes in the past five months. This is all of it. And I would say, I mean, it's, it's, the amount of stuff isn't that huge. And, and then there's the stuff that I have not used. <laughs> what? And now I'm gonna get rid of all of this. I'll start by getting rid of all the unnecessary paper documents. There's a lot of them. I'll go through this box. I'll throw all the unnecessary papers to the bin. And then I'll scan the remaining papers and that way I will be paper free. It take me like eight hours, but worth it. So to get rid of all of this stuff, I made a decision chart, which I call the unlazy decluttering chart. A simple decision chart I created to help me get rid of all the clutter. For each item I wanted to get rid of, I went through a series of questions. Does it have huge sentimental value? If yes, I stored it. If not, I moved to the next question. Do I use it seasonally? If yes, I stored it. If not, I moved to the next question. Is it easily replaced for under 100 bucks? If not, I tried to sell it. If yes, I moved to the next question. Is it useful to someone? If yes, I would donate it to charity. If no, I would throw it away. With this decision chart, I created four piles of stuff. Store, sell, donate and throw away. All right, so. Here I have all my sentimental stuff and all my seasonal stuff. These I'm gonna store. Here I've got stuff that's worth over a hundred dollars, but it's stuff that I don't use, so, you know, I'm gonna sell this stuff. Then here I've got mainly, mainly clothes. And all of this I'm gonna Give to my friends, and then the rest of it I'm gonna donate to charity. So, uh, you can take anything from there, there, or, or there. Do you have, uh, do you have uh, enough stuff? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think, uh, this will do, this will do. And then finally, uh, this is all the, all the crap I've accumulated over the years. Uh, and I've sorted them into electronics, uh, plastics and all that. So um, I'm gonna recycle this and uh, throw all of this away.
And then the important question, how many things did I own after this challenge? First of all, clothing. A few shirts, hoodie, pants and shorts, two jackets, shoes, gloves, underwear and some other stuff. 43 pieces of clothing in total. 205 pieces of clothing less than before this challenge. Training gear, stuff like heart rate monitor, foam rollers, swimming equipment, bike equipment and well, a bike. 18 items. Video gear, cameras, tripods, GoPro accessories, FPV controller, drone, mics and lots of chargers and wires. 26 items in total. Editing gear, laptop, mouse, headphones, hard drives, desktop computer. 13 items in total. Other stuff. Hygiene supplies, wallet, passport, sunglasses, notebook, phones and other stuff I use often. 11 items in total. All in all, I now own around 120 items, depending on what you consider an item. That's 834 items less than before, just 12% of all the stuff I used to have. And contrary to before, every single item I own now serves a specific purpose. So that's it. Tomorrow I'm gonna move to the Netherlands and I will only take with me those 120 items. Let's see how that works out. And that's when we get to the present moment. So I've now lived in the Netherlands for the past two months with those 120 items and I've had no problems whatsoever. Quite the opposite. Uh, it's been great. Um, I have all my clothes in this one tiny drawer. And for instance, uh, three shirts has been more than enough for me or t-shirts. Then uh, everything else is in this cabinet right here. Stuff like my swimming equipment and my camera equipment. And well, I, I do have these uh, two bags uh, that I use to carry stuff around. And you might also notice that there are more than 120 items in this household, but that's because I moved in with um, with Atili and Atili has some stuff. And uh, also we should do the dishes soon. But, but, but none of this has prevented me from noticing uh, the benefits of owning less stuff. First, I never need to spend time thinking about what I wear. I open the drawer, I take whatever is on the top. Second, it's easier to keep my stuff organized. I mean, I only have two drawers I need to worry about and keeping them organized is a breeze. Third, I value each item more and take better care of each item because, for instance, if I rip my pants, I have to buy a new pair as I only have one pair of pants. Finally, in some situations, having less stuff can actually increase my creativity. See, when I constrain myself to just a few items, I often come up with novel and clever ways of using those items. And this is often called the power of creative constraint. And it has been shown in studies. One study found that working with constraints led participants to make more connections between items that are not obviously or naturally associated and may have encouraged them to explore new associative paths. And you've actually seen this creative constraint in action in this very video you're watching right now. Remember the unlazy decluttering chart? Well, previously I would have used an overhead camera rig to film that, but I don't have a rig anymore, so I had to come up with a more creative way to do it. I ended up filming the clip handheld and syncing my camera movements to the narration that was playing from my phone. I move to the next question. Is it easily replaced? I actually think that the end result was more creative and even better than it would have been with a rig. So. I would say that the packing party was well worth it. It's not the most convenient way of getting rid of all the clutter in your house. And you won't get the full benefits before you've thrown away all the excess stuff from the boxes. But if you have tried different methods of decluttering and they just have not worked, uh, this might be the option for you. And even if you don't want to arrange a packing party, I think decluttering in general is a really, really good thing. It can make you less stressed, more focused, and generally just a more uh, happy human being. Just don't overdo it. I think minimalism isn't about having the minimal amount of stuff. It's about only having the, th the stuff that is valuable to you. So maybe it's time to get rid of that shirt that's been dusting in your closet for the past four years. novel ways of using those items. This is often called the power of...
Finally, in some situations, having less. Finally, having less.